Okay, welcome to What the Friday. So if you didn't catch my last live, we were starting to get into a groove of doing this on a more regular basis, just interviewing some, some doctors from around the country, interviewing just people in the industry. Um, so this is my commitment to this group, like just showing up. I, we have a lot of things planned this year, but um, I, I definitely want you guys to feel like I am here in this group now. Like it, it's been a while since I've been an active contributing person. Um, so anyways, I wanted, I wanted to, to start the show off as a welcome again, welcome to the group. If you are new, say hi, get to know people in, um, who are doing the same thing that you're doing. Um, ask questions. I know recently we've been getting, we've been getting some anonymous questions and, um, I love, I love the anonymity, anonymity. I said that correctly, right? <laughs> um, but also don't be afraid to say who you are. Um, it, yeah, it's just get to know people. It really is a, a, a fun group. Okay. With that being said, I am, <clears throat> I'm in the process of doing a startup all over again. And, and it's so interesting because you forget all of the things that actually take place to, to build a business from scratch. Like, I think, I don't know if it's trauma if it's repressed memories, um, but I doing this again, I think, uh, well, one, I got a lot of, of people who said you're crazy for doing this again, but I love this stuff so much. I, I love it. And um, Colin is, is one of my right hand women. Colin knows um, all the things that we're, we're doing, we're, we're trying to build this year. So Colin, feel free to to hop on in the comments too, because um, I commend anybody who will who will be beside me doing this again. So, uh, with that being said, I have some things that uh, I wanted to update you on because there are quite a few things that I would change if um, if I'm doing it again, which I am. I'm doing it again. So, I will. I'll start off with um, well. One of the things that we just have, or that just took place was we finally closed escrow on the building. So if you know anything, Cullen's laughing, yes. If you know anything about my first office, I, I purchased the building. I love real estate and I think it's a really great investment. I don't, I don't know what the market's gonna do, I don't know, but um, it's, I think it's fun being your own um, landlord. Oh, thank you, Christy, and uh, I miss you. I cut my hair, yeah, I cut off a lot of my hair. And actually, we just recorded, I just recorded with Michael right before we got on, right before I got on. I don't know why I say we, it's just me and you guys, so thank you for joining. Um, I appreciate you not letting me talk to myself, which I do pretty frequently already. Um, but I did, I did cut my hair and, uh, I went over all of the reasoning why I did that with Michael. So it's going to air on the making of podcast this week, but back to, back to my story. So I love owning the building that we, we build in. I mean, as you guys know, once you're in a space, it's freaking impossible to, I mean, it's not impossible but we are amazing tenants because there is a lot of effing work that goes on into building a practice. So, and I'm preaching to the choir because you guys all know that. Um, I just closed escrow on location number two, just two weeks ago. And guys, if COVID has taught us anything, it means that everything is like delayed. So I started this process last, um, 
last August is when we submitted our initial offer and we were supposed to close in January. January 24th, I think, was our target close date, and that didn't happen. It happened like May, May 7th or something. So anyways, we're closed. We closed. And now where I'm at in that state, where I'm at now is we are working on the final schematics, the final plan with the architect and the engineers, and then we have to wait to get permitting through our city. So I'm still probably a month out before we can start um, demolition. So I just figured I would just come on and this would just be my weekly vlog. I have a plan of actually um, having like more video to show you of this space and, and we're gonna get a YouTube channel up and running. Um, Colin, one more thing to add to our list, uh, how to become videographers and how to edit. So, but I want you guys to have all of this information because it's really fun. It's really fun. It's really exciting and it's freaking terrifying all at once. So the things that I would do, one is, um, I hate carpet and the first time around, we put carpet in the space because everybody talks about how like warm carpet is and how it dampens the sound. Well, three years in or not even three years in, the carpet was, it was just getting stained up the wazoo. I know we throw events like nobody's business, but anytime you even spill a drop of anything, it just showed up on our carpet. And the carpet, I only had it in the walkway and yeah, pretty much in the hallways. And the front office and the manager's office. Uh, we ended up ripping that up, ripping that off. What do you say? I swear, I know how to speak English. Well, anyways, this past December, even though the carpet was only four years old, I ended up removing all of it and, um, and yes, Colin, follow our, our Instagram for more content and updates. So our office was closed for two weeks over Christmas break. And that's when I had the demolition crew rip up all this carpet. And then I ended up replacing it with tile. And the tile is, is, is a lot louder and cooler but we are a loud office, so I don't really care. <laughs> I hated, I hated the stains so much. Okay, so that's one thing. Another thing, I think some people have talked about it in the group, but having LVP, luxury vinyl plank, in the operatories with all those ridges, when I chose it with my designer for the first time around, it was so beautiful and of course I'm attracted to like beautiful things as I'm sure all of you guys are. Um, it is awful. It is awful. Like we will have the uh, profession, we'll have professional cleaners come in and literally after the first round of patients, you can see the dirt and grime embedded in all of the, the ridges and Colin Colin has been on her hands and knees with a toothbrush trying to scrape out the grime and Colin, Colin can attest to that. So this time around when I was choosing, when I, I still am choosing all of the different design features that are going in office number two, we are not doing LVP. In fact, I am... I hate LVP guys. If you guys have LVP in your offices and don't have to worry about that, please tell me what we're doing wrong because it's, it's not fun, right Colin? Um, okay, so I think the second time around I'm going to, I've already asked if we could do polished concrete for the flooring, but I got some pushback from um, from my contractor about that um, because the way the trenching is and 
just the aesthetics of new and old concrete, I guess it, it becomes an eyesore. So if you have an office with concrete, I would love to know your thoughts. Um, so that's with flooring. Um, third, I don't know why I never looked at parking. I just did it. I, so my office, our current office is in an older part of Folsom. It's in historic Folsom. When I bought the building, parking was not even on my radar. It really wasn't. There was a parking lot that was combined with the building next door. And the building next door is much larger than our office. And the people who purchase the building next door are very mean people. And they've, all, they've actually uh, threatened to tow our patients um, if they parked on their property even before they opened their business. So they didn't even have a building yet, like they were demoing the building. So our patients would park there because it's an empty building and, um, and then the owner would come into our office and threaten to, um, to tow. So um, they ended up separating the parking lot from our parking lot. So now I think we have six, six parking spaces for my, my office of six ops. And that's supposed to include my employees. Well, that is now an issue because my employees have parked in the back where uh, my, other, my other neighbor has been gracious enough to let us borrow a couple spots. And then I have them park across the, um, there's like this field that they have to cross. So if it's raining, they're, they're wading through mud. Um, and they're also parked behind our building, which is, I don't think is very fire. I, I'm just not going to talk about the fire safety, but I, I'm pretty sure it's, yeah, it's, it, parking is an issue. So our patients have, <clears throat> have called and, and they said, like, we're running late for our appointment. We're trying to find parking. Your lot is full. There's no street parking. So when you are looking at, um, at your space, unless you're in a big city where people aren't really, aren't really driving or they are already accustomed to fighting for parking, make sure parking is... Um, is, is a lot. You, you, you really want to make sure your patients have as few of barriers to get to your practice as possible. I mean, let's face it, they don't really want to be in our chair in the first place. You give them any reason that they don't have to come in, they're going to take it. So parking is an issue. Um, Colin, feel free to, uh, to chime in too. Um, Thank you, Zaid. I hope I pronounced your name correctly. Thank you, Zaid. Great point. Okay, so parking. Also, um, my office is under 2,000 square feet and the way that I had planned it. So I designed the layout myself. I don't necessarily recommend that. I have taken Scott Luna's breakaway startup course and then I thought well I think I could do this on my own well um, when I drew it on paper everything looks like it's going to work right in actuality I fit seven ops in about 1900 square feet and looking back at that now I mean, it's, it's stressful. And I have, there's 12 employees all together in my office. And to have all of us try to have a meeting or try to have lunch or try to have any team building exercise, it is just, it's a, it's a stressful environment. And I know that 
our mindset is, at least in the beginning, our mindset is let's try to fit as many ops as possible because we're going to keep it lean. We are going to go, 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 and we're just going to to try to squeeze all the juice out of this lemon, right? And that was exact, exactly my thinking. And um, four and a half years in, guys, I would change so much about the layout. And all, so I, my ops are eight, eight feet wide, 11 feet deep. But where I cut space was one, the break room. And my employees, I, I have a very tight knit team. I'm very awesome culture to see them sitting in buckets on the corner of the wall, like tucked away by the IT room or like right in front of the refrigerator. So in order for someone to get their lunch, someone has to move their seat. Like it's, it, it makes me really sad. And if, if you are, if you're building an office where you really want your employees to be happy to come to work and I, I strongly encourage you just make sure that you do have a place for them, a, a place where they can retreat to because as stressful as this is for us, the doctor, as we're working, we're worrying about overhead, we're worrying about whether patients are going to show up, we're worrying about all the things our team, our team is going to be the biggest return on investment. And I can't, I can't stress that enough. Like it, so, um, everybody practices differently and smile and co if you follow us, if you follow us on uh, our stories on Instagram and what have you, um, I have been blessed with an amazing team of women who genuinely love each other and get along great. And it breaks my heart that they are stressed out and they, they don't have that respite that everybody needs. I just recorded a podcast with the amazing Joanna Scott and we talked about burnout. And this week, I'm not going to go into specifics because I'm not going to get emotional. But even when you think about successful practices and you see all the things on social media, it's hard. It, it gets easier and it gets hard and it gets easier and it gets hard. But... Four and a half years in, you, you start thinking about not just, can I do this as cheaply as possible? Where can I cut corners so that I can build more money-making op operatories, right? And whether or not you're going to do one office or 10 or 20, just keep in mind the mental health aspect. And um, we all need that. Like we all need a place where you as the doctor can close the door and really think about next steps. Think about branding. Think about the vision for your practice, where you want to take it, where you want to grow, how you want to live your life. Um, but also do not build it so that it's just about you because your team is just as important. And all of us now are, are really understanding the effects of COVID, the effects of this crazy workforce that we are all dealing with, like finding amazing people. I don't know about you, but if I were in an office where it felt like a maze and a rat race and you're just trying to go, 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 
I don't know how long I would last. So just, um, just my two cents, my office, my next office. So I don't know if you guys remember, but I posted, an, I posted, this is before like the whole anonymous thing. I posted this floor plan and I said, hey, I'm posting anonymously. You guys, that was actually me because the very first rendering of, of the next space, I did it again. I tried to make like 13 operatories fit in the new floor plan. And, um, and then my husband, my husband's a moderator in this group. Thanks, Brian. Um, my husband said like, what the hell are you, do are you doing? Like he used expletives. I'll try to keep this rated G. Um, I'm no filter. If you guys really want to know, like if you listen to the podcast, I have no filter. Um, he's like, you don't practice that way. And all of the headaches all of the pain points that you are literally trying to escape from in office number one, you were trying to do it again in office number two. 13 ops in 3,700 square feet is obviously doable, but that's actually not how I practice at all. Like I am, I think I am the slowest dentist you will ever meet and I am, a-okay with that. I do not, I don't want to be jumping from room to room to room. I, maybe it's because I'm getting older, but I, um, I'm just slow and I love to talk. And, and that's not my workflow. I am now, um, I've been fortunate enough to take amazing CE and and really do the dentistry that I want to do, which is comprehensive dentistry. We do a lot of Invisalign. We do cosmetics. I love photography. And I don't need 13 rooms so that I could skimp out on the break room and all of that. So long story short, um, my floor plan that I originally posted is not the floor plan that I'm using. Um, I have a much bigger break room. I, I've designed other features in, in this space that I'm sure you're going to see at some point because I've decided, talking out loud, this is now going to be my weekly journal and you guys um, are just going to hear startup number two as it progresses. So startup number one, we did a whole podcast series, The Making Of with Michael. I documented everything um, just in audio format. This time, I'm going to bring you guys along for the ride. And I'm going to make mistakes. And that's fine. Totally fine with it. But I really want to know what you guys are doing too. And... Um, yeah, I think this was um, this was a good live. Let me know, like, okay. So what I plan for, what I plan for these events, these weekly gatherings, is one to show up so that you guys know that I'm here, and two, I'm gonna update you whatever's happening this week. Um, today I did what I would do differently. This week I met with my amazing. Uh, equipment specialist and we are fine-tuning all of the things that I'm putting in location number two I will say also um, funding I um, I wanted to give a shout out to Bank of America because they have been amazing to work with um, and they really have like they've Getting funding not just for um, not just for a second startup, but also to purchase a building in California is no easy feat. And I was I had my my choice between three banks who were all pretty much you know they were they were vying for our business, um, but Bank of America was was like a dream, is a dream to work with. So 
Um, yeah. If you guys have questions, um, okay. Did you use them for the first office too? Actually, that's a great question. I did not use them for location number one. Uh, I used another bank and not that, I mean, I had a great experience with that bank also. Um, but when the pandemic hit and um, we were all kind of forced to find PPP funding, um, I felt like I felt like I was left high and dry. So that's the reason why I didn't I didn't continue with them for 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 office number two. Okay, let me try to answer some questions. Um, while I am reading, I mean, if hi Kareem, you're the goat, Kareem. Um, do you guys know that we are throwing a retreat? We're hosting a retreat. I hope you guys know that. Um, it's this November, and the reason for it is because honestly, I really love this group. And I really, with how big this group has gotten, it has, it's been so hard to connect, to really, I mean, case in point, you guys see how many people are posting anonymously? It's because it's effing intimidating to ask your question in front of a group of 11,000. Do you know how intimidating this is for me to show up in this group? I... I know you don't believe it, but I'm actually shy. Don't laugh. I'm, this is like frightening to me. But the reason why there needs to be a, a retreat is because I miss those small connections. Like for me to tell you my story is one thing, but imagine 50 docs coming together and you are hearing everyone's stories. Like all of the pain points, all of the things that we worry about, the overhead, the HR, the staff costs, like what, what is my marketing doing? What is my marketing not doing? All of those things, you have an, a community of, of people who are dealing with the same stuff. But because of how large this group is, Nobody wants to talk about the struggles. Just this week, I got a very long message that actually broke my heart. And this, and it breaks my heart because one, it's not the first message that I get that I've gotten like this, but it's, it's about a doctor who literally is asking if the mastermind or the Napa retreat is right for them because they're, they themselves are not in the right mind, mindset. Because when they opened their doors, it wasn't all the glitz and the glamour that social media portrays. Like, all of this is happening behind closed doors. And it's sad. Like, not everybody should open a startup. A hundred percent. There are a lot of things that happen right? Like your demographics could be awful. Um, like you, you, you have, to, it takes like intestinal fortitude to do this, right? Um, so anyways, this is getting to be like my long drawn out rant, but in essence, I want a smaller community. Like I want, I want to be a part of people who are connecting not just in real life, but online. We're going to have our private, um, our private Facebook group. We're going to have our own like monthly sessions where we can dive deep into all of these things that we just need. We just need it. It's, it's like therapy. You guys, this is just going to be my, my weekly therapy. Um, and you guys can show up and listen hopefully, or you can like hang out in Napa. Napa's gonna be amazing, guys. It's, um, we are taking out all the guesswork for you. It's going to be at the amazing Archer Hotel. It is, one, it's incredible. It has this am amazing rooftop 
bar that they have now, um, they're turning in half of the rooftop into a whiskey bar. And we've reserved half of it the first night for our private dinner. They're gonna have music and there's like lounge chairs in uh, water. That's where Colin is going to be. Um, they have fire pits, but um, we've already secured the first winery and um, we're gonna tease it out because all of the information that, that you're going to get, it's, it's a vacation because you need it and you deserve it. Um, so the mastermind is going to take place from eight to noon on Thursday. And Colin's asking, when can we announce the wineries and speakers? When we have um, secured everything, like, like signed, okay? So we're gonna work on that in uh, over the next couple weeks, so stay tuned. Um, Archer Hotel coming in on November 16th, which is a Wednesday. Thursday is we have breakfast on the rooftop overlooking the valley. Then we have our mastermind from 8 to noon in one of the ballrooms, followed by uh, lunch at Charlie Palmer Steakhouse. Then we get picked up by our tour guide. Our tour guide is going to bring us off-site to the first winery where we have our private event and we have all the tasting, all the tastings and stuff ready to go. That's for three hours. Our tour guide is then going to bring us back to Archer. We take showers, get dolled up, get ready for dinner. And dinner is the first night is going to be on the rooftop. Like I said, it's blocked off. We have our whiskey bar, we have music, our private dinner, and then just more networking. That And then Friday, it's the same thing. Uh, breakfast on the roof, then mastermind, and we have one person. I'm not going to, um, we have fire pits, yes. I'm not going to reveal who that person is, but this person is going to basically He's gonna close out our event, and it's in, it's going to be incredible. So um, I know we're keeping things hush hush because um, yeah, we're get, we're gonna tell you all the things. Anyways, then we get whisked off to winery number two. Three hours there, whining and dining with your new besties who have all been doing exactly what you're doing and then come back get ready for dinner dinner our final night is at the culinary institute of america where weddings take place where some of the nation's top chefs have trained our group has um our private dinner there and then saturday is your fun day your open fun day we invite you to bring your loved ones your significant others and um, secure your own wine tasting and if you want like all the people who you've just met try to organize like small groups we can do dinner lunches what have you so and then we all leave on sunday we get back to our offices refreshed reinvigorated and then it's thanksgiving do you think this is by accident no so it's gonna be it's gonna be amazing guys and then the mastermind will start probably that December. So um, a full year of follow-up and accountability after the event, um, just to keep this going, like this energy and um, this connectivity. So we really hope that you, uh, you join us in Napa. Uh, there are discount codes. Um, I'm gonna post the link to where you can find out all the information um colin did i forget anything i'm sure i did but but this is going to be a weekly thing so um i'm i met with my my um equipment guy so that's why if you hear questions from me like your sensors your handheld x-rays all of that it's because i'm supposed to be finalizing that actually like this week today i don't know but i think this is a very long live 35 minutes um and and to think i didn't think i had anything i wanted to say today see i hope you guys have a fabulous weekend 
Um, I will see you next week. What we're planning, thank you, Colin. Thank you for, Colin just posted the, um, she just posted the link created by our friends at Studio 88. Is there a discount code still, Colin? Are we still doing that? Um, right now we've extended the early bird, the early bird special, but I wanted to say the people, you guys, the people who have already signed up, it's already a badass group of docs. Um, so I can't wait. It's going to be awesome. And okay, that's it. I promise this is it. Have a great weekend again. Um, and thank you for tuning in. I will see you guys next Friday. Colin and I are going to sit down and create a content schedule because in addition to these lives of what's happening with Smile & Co, what's happening with the retreat, I want to create a CE calendar. Like I want to put people in front of you to talk about case presentation, to talk about front office, to talk about mindset, all of those things, okay? So if you want to list the topics that you want to hear or uh, recommend anybody that you would like to see on, on our CE calendar, let's make it happen. Um, all right. Thank you guys for tuning in. Have a, have a blast. Happy Friday, and I'll see you next week. Bye, guys.